right? So what I'm doing here is I'm separating the back fillets from the bone to so just fold it down the bone and angle the knife a little bit. There you go. Two rabbit fillets. So now we've got the bone and the skin taken off. Now we're gonna do the brine. Yes. So to make the brine, you want approximately 8% salt because we're gonna let this sit throughout the day. So it's gonna sit for a longer time. Like, if you wanna speed up the brining process, sure you can put more salt, but you gotta also think about this, the size of your meat, when are you cooking. So if you're just starting in the morning like we're doing now, and you're gonna cook it for dinner, then I recommend about 8% salt for a meat that size. Uh, to measure up 8% salt, we'd need a scale or some really good eyes. Put some water first, one cup. I may take two cups just to make the math easy on the salt. The water, 8%, that's about a fifth of a cup. We can add other spices, paprika. Also like black peppercorns. So you can actually chuck in a couple of peppercorns here. Not too many. You can put in some paprika. Same thing here, not too much. Putting in some chili flakes. I'm gonna chuck in some ginger. I'm gonna put in a bit of garlic powder, but not too much, because I'm gonna chuck in a bit of fresh garlic as well. And last but not least, Cajun. Cooking at a caravan park! <laughs> Where the fuck is the knife? Second job. Oh. Crush it bro, just crush it. There you go, garlic already peeled. Two seconds, two seconds. Instead of sitting over the sink for half an hour. As I make garlic, crush it and peel it. I'm just gonna cut really rough pieces into it because I'm not looking to make it fancy. So just like this so the juices can escape the garlic. Now, Stir this around until the salt is dissolved. So here's the thing, because I don't have a proper container, I just chuck the salt and everything in and I'm mixing the brine in this bowl. But what I prefer to do is actually dissolve the salt in the water before I put in the meat, because it makes this part way easier. You can dissolve it way easier. It smells amazing. So what does brine actually do for the meat? So, what brining does is, the, the thing is, it's the salt that does the job. Salt extracts moisture from the meat, but because there's so much moisture already with adding the water, what happens when you brine is, you get all the water out of the meat, but the meat still needs to end up in equilibrium. So, the salt water goes back into the meat, but this time, when the water goes back into the meat, it's infused with all the spices you saw us put in there, the garlic juices, the flavors from the peppercorn, and it ends up being juiced all the way through the meat. And not only that, the, so the brine actually changes the composition of the proteins. So when you cook something that's been brined, it's very hard to get it dry. It stays very moist and very juicy. Yeah, I, I got a rule, which is any white meat, brine the shit out of it. First time making a rabbit brine, it's gonna be interesting to see how that ends up. So you can either cover this with blood wrap, or we could just put it in a plastic bag. So it's been, I think, about nine hours since I put the rabbit in brine, the fillets. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna prepare the potatoes. We're gonna blanch some beans. We're gonna roast some carrots. And what we'll start with is to preheat the oven. The oven is from 1901. So to start it, we gotta pull this lever. And if you look on inside of the oven, <laughs> yeah, old school. Check it about 185, 190. Let that preheat. So just keep it simple, cut the potatoes in half, shorten down the boiling time, pre-boil some water. Because we're roasting these carrots, I don't care too much about peeling them. Oh. 
because we want to speed up the cooking process, we are going to get these half down. Drizzle some oil, pepper, rock salt, flip all the sides down. Those boil for a while, I'm gonna let those roast for a while and I'll pull out the rabbit now and let it get to room temperature a bit because we don't want to fry it while it's too cold. Look at that brine! Oof, oof, oof. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pour this brine off. I'm gonna wash the meat. I'm actually gonna rinse them off. Give them a quick, easy rinse. I'm gonna transfer these to a plate. So now I'm going to do a very important thing, which is dry these. I'm going to dry them with a paper towel. So I don't want them wet when I shuck them back into the bowl. So we've dried out the bowl, we've dried out the meat, let it sit there for a while. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pour some corn flour on it. And I'm going to let it sit in corn flour till it gets to about room temperature. Now you might ask, why is he pouring corn flour on this rabbit meat? Or you could actually put any type of starch on it, is to give it a bit of a crunch or crisp. The reason you want to let it sit is the exact same reason you let any type of meat sit before you cook it. Because if you don't let the inside of the meat get to like the same temperature as the outside, what's going to happen is the outside of your meat is going to cook up way faster than the inside because the internal part of the meat needs to get up in temperature first. Hattie wants to have his just plain pan fried in flour, which is fine, but I really want to try and make kind of like chicken tenders with like uh, panko crumbs. Chicken tenders. Sorry, but light chicken tenders with rabbit. I'm going to try my way, he's going to try his way, and we're going to have a verdict at the end and see who's better. So we have already floured it because we only just decided this now, which is probably not the best way, but that's all right. I think it'll still work. So you just put some glad wrap on top because when you um, tenderize it, it's not going to split the meat. It tends to stay together and all in one piece, which is good. Now, I don't have a rolling pin. I don't have really anything. So I am going to use a diving weight to tenderize this meat, which is, these will come in handy today. So yeah, so. See how, like if I was doing that without the glad wrap, it would have split already. So really you just want to get it into a nice thin kind of like maybe like this. When it cooks it's going to be all evenly cooked with the crumbs on top. So I would say that piece is done. This is not going to need much. That's probably already done. And I would say that's already done. Just peel that off. I might reflower them a little bit because it's kind of quite separated but we've got some nice little thin pieces there all tenderized and ready to be crumbed. So so now we're gonna crack an egg up, just like your normal every, like your normal sinjo, like what you would usually do. Crumbs into a bowl. Pour some panko crumbs in a bowl. So we just dip our rabbit into our egg like that. Get it nice and coated, make sure it's all coated. Good. And straight into the panko crumbs. Probably not the best bowls to use, but we have to make do because we are in just a little bit of a cabin right now. But the nicely crumbed rabbit piece. Panko crumbs are a bit thicker than like your normal bread crumbs, so they're a bit more chunkier. They're a bit harder to stick to the meat sometimes. You can use normal bread crumbs too if you prefer, but I really love panko crumbs. The way they fry up is just divine. So we will see whose rabbit is better. And I honestly think mine's gonna be better, but we'll see. <laughs> All right, potatoes look like they're pretty much done. So we'll look at these carrots. Starting to look like they've been roasted. Let's get ourselves a frying pan. Super frying pan again. Should have brought my own frying pan, bloody hell. I'm gonna start my own rabbit, which is only fair that I cook my own and Taylor cooks her own. Because if her turns out to be worse, she's gonna be like, oh, but you cooked it all wrong, babe. So, I'm starting with shucking in some olive oil into a pan, letting it heat up. 
I'm gonna get ready with the butter. There's always an argument, oh, do you fry it in olive oil or do you fry it in butter? And something tastes better when you fry it in butter, something tastes better when you fry it in olive oil. But I've got a simple rule. If you want color, olive oil. If you want flavor, butter. If you want maximize both, fucking both. So my oil looks to be hot. Take that to medium heat. So what I do is I let it cook, take its time. So this is the first time I'm actually cooking or frying up rabbit fillets. Everything I'm doing is based on previous food knowledge. I know it's a white meat, hence the reason why I'm brining it. I know it acts like chicken, hence the reason I'm cooking it at a lower heat to get the, get the meat cooked all the way through. But the result, no clue. Right, pretty much done. I'm just gonna put in some butter. Oh, look at that curving. Beautiful. Giving it a little bit of a basting plate. Cover them with aluminium foil. And let them rest for a while. While you cook yours. Usually I would start with a clean pan, but see as we just cook the exact same ingredient in this, I might keep it because it's got really nice butter going right now. I might just add a little bit extra oil because I'm kind of like semi like shallow frying mine. About three pieces here, so let's see how they go. Easy does it. So they're only like this thin. So I reckon maximum about two minutes each side. We'll see how we go. I've never cooked rabbit before. We just want to check if they're pretty much brown. So we're gonna just right, I might put this small one here. See what we got. So see that? That is definitely ready to live. Might just watch it. Ooh. We want to drain a little bit of that oil out, a bit much. It's just going to taste like oil otherwise. Lay that there. And just sit them on the paper towel like that. And that way all the oil should start just coming out of those pieces there. Panko crumbed rabbit. I'm actually quite proud of this. We'll see whose is better. I put the potatoes in the colander. So what we're going to do with these potatoes, I'll put them back in the pot straight away. We're gonna get a massive chunk of butter. We get that butter and we get that butter. Mm -hmm. That should do it. As soon as you shuck on all that butter, you wanna grab your black pepper and your salt. Not too much black pepper. But be generous with the salt. Not too generous. And then here comes the magic. That's it. Now let it sit for about like two minutes, not more. Remember the potato with the butter and salt and pepper? See that butter is starting to melt? So what I like to do is put the lid on and just give it a hard shake. You want to mash the potatoes a bit while doing this. One of my favorite ways of making potatoes. Let's plate this stuff up. So, I just went normal pan fried ones with uh, corn flour. Taylor went with the pank of crumbed ones. It's really good though. So, this is my first. Okay. Go over. Cheers. Cheers. It's good, but it's really salty. Is that a fucking pellet? So, it's a pellet left in the rabbit from shooting it. Great. So, measuring up 8% of salt by eye measurement was not the right thing to do. The meat itself, 
Good. It'll be all right. Yeah. Flavors are all there. Yeah. Okay. Let's try yours. Cheers again. Cheers. Mine's better. Yeah, you want. That's <laughs> actually pretty sick. Fuck it's yeah. like the crunch and the panko crumbs took away from that saltiness. Mm. So it's actually really good. And I think when, if we add a bit of this on top, Trippy mayo, the best thing in the world, that's going to taste delicious. Better. Mm. 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 These potatoes are actually really good. Oh. <laughs> I'll it now. I love this mash. I really want to mash, but this is pretty much like mash, so. I like how the first bite I take, there's a shotgun pellet in it. That's how fresh this shit is. <laughs> <laughs> I stuffed up with the brine. I didn't have the right measurement tools. You want it to be at about 8%. And if you remember at the beginning of the video, I said like leave it to about six hours. I left it for nine hours with higher salt content. So this meat really got salty. Not like overly salty, but you can tell that it's a bit salty. No. If I hadn't done that, this meal would have been 10 out of 10. Right now, I will rate my meal about six and a half. Mine's like about an eight. Because yeah, like definitely. the crumbs, honestly, was really good. Yeah, next time I do this, I'm definitely gonna to be, pank or crumb it, bash it. To be honest with you, because I tenderized it as well, by bashing it at the start, it also is more tender than Hattie's. Hattie's meat is a little bit more tougher than mine, whereas mine feels a lot more tender. Mm, definitely. I've been in the kitchen all day, literally. Yeah, we made two videos today. Mm -hmm. One with the rabbit, and the other one's coming next week, which is gonna be with the milk we got from the cow farm. Mm -hmm. We made halloumi. Mm. 